ready for the vlog. I wanna travel where the sunset meets the land. Make the buzzards fly with thunder from my hand. I'll give a friendly wink with kindness, smile wide. But when you look too long, you'll see there's none inside. And I'll stroll. Script. Exit tablet mode. Hi, welcome back to Vlogmas, and thank you so much for hanging out with me again if you're an old friend. If you're new here, I'm Rebecca and I make music as Keen Garrity. I also co write and act in the audio comedy series Curdle Holler. I'm just an old swamp troll with a wig on, so please subscribe to my channel so I can buy new wigs and share my music and also share content about creative living. I feel like this video is like too bright. Sorry. I'm having to resort to artificial light because of the solstice. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere like I am, then you've noticed that the days have been getting shorter and shorter. The sunset yesterday was at 5.08 p.m. here where I am. A lot of us like to mark these transitions in the year because it makes us feel more in tune with nature. So I thought I would start my shortest day of the year with a nice long walk in the woods with my 13 year old Beagle Foxhound mix Porter, who is, you can, he's sitting right here like on the couch while I'm filming this. I'm gonna mess up my camera angle. Yeah, there he is, licking his foot. Um, he's my little shadow. I am never without him. <laughs> and uh, he's my number one walk companion, especially when we go out into the woods because he totally loves it. We go to a metro park that's near my house that has a lot of beautiful wooded trails and he just can't get enough of it. He wants to smell everything. I'm especially grateful that we can go for a walk in the woods this year because he just had surgery for a herniated disc about a month ago. And I am so glad that he is so rehabilitated and doing so well after his surgery. Seeing him so happy in nature makes me happy to be in nature as well. As you can tell, it was a very dreary, very gray kind of day and the sun was definitely hiding out from us a little bit. I like going into the woods all times of the year because you can always see a glimmer of life and beauty even when things are dormant. Another ritual that I had for solstice was to make sure that I worked on my main creative craft, which is songwriting. I love the act of songwriting. I love the craft of songwriting. Um, the thing that I love the most about it is that songwriting is very logical when you get down to it, but it's also perfectly magical at the same time. And I guess what I mean by that is that you can write a song to assignment. You can pick a genre, you can pick a structure, you can pick common chord changes, you could pick common keys, you can pick common melodic patterns, you could pick common lyrical themes and write a song absolutely by the book. But just because you can do that, it doesn't guarantee that that song that you write will really resonate with people in a way that's me meaningful to them. And it doesn't guarantee that what you write is going to hit anybody in the heart <laughs> or uh, pull their heartstrings. You can't make that. You can't force that. Songwriting is really elusive in that way. And it doesn't matter how good you are at it. You can make a song, but you can't force a song to be moving. <laughs> or you can't force a song to be a bop. You can't force a song to be like the all time jam party like it's 1999. I don't know why that was the first song that I thought of, but it was, so do with that what you will. This other part here that I 
can't quite figure out what I'm doing with it yet, and I don't even know if I can use it. There are algorithms that have tried to write songs and that have written songs. There are people who have scores and scores of hit songs under their belts. But even those people can't guarantee that the next song that they write is going to be a hit. Su successes like that are few and far between. Songwriting is so elusive, and I really, really, really love that about the craft of songwriting. It makes it feel like there is some kind of, like, mercurial little deity out there that you have to appease in order to get your songs to land. And uh, I just love that. You can't force it. So I try to honor that elusive nature by tuning in to my songwriting occasionally, even when I'm not actively writing, and to work on the little snippets and hooks that I have in my pocket for the next time. I do this just to show the muse that I'm appreciative and that I'm tuned in and that I'm receptive. Something like that. That sounds kind of gross. Isn't that sounds like a little cringy, but it's true. I don't even care. I don't care if it is cringe because guess what? This is my stupid YouTube channel, and if I'm gonna be embarrassing on it, I'm gonna be. With a hint of root beer flavor. Anyway, when it comes to the actual long night of the winter solstice, I thought it would be cool to plan a few activities that I could do in front of the fire. This is terrible. I don't know if you're like this, but I'm definitely like this. I don't have an easy place to gather firewood like all the time. I know some people are really lucky like they have wooded areas near their house where they can chop wood or they can get it brought in pretty easily because there's a bunch of truck dudes everywhere who love hauling firewood and stacking it for you. But I don't really live in a place like that. I live in the city and um, I can get firewood, but it's a little pricier just because you know, you can only get it in like in small cords at the grocery store. And so I often don't have a fire whenever I want one, which is dumb. And I need to have a little conversation with myself about how you need to treat yourself because you really do. Life is short. Have a fire. Have a fire. Or I noticed my neighbor that I don't like had a branch down in his yard earlier. I should just go get that. I should just go get that and burn it. Okay, note to self, go to my neighbor's yard during the long night get log, report back. Anyway, <laughs> if you're like me, you have a hard time sort of justifying small expenses like that that just do nothing but bring you pleasure. And I was like, Rebecca, fork over the $8 for the stupid firewood. Like, it's fine. You have $8. You have $8. What are you going to spend it on? Like a Chipotle burrito? Okay, so just please go get your stupid firewood. Idiot. So I did. So since I have my firewood, I thought it would be cool to plan some activities that I could actually do in front of the fire so I could enjoy a nice, cozy, long night vibe. All right, if you are like me, then you might also have some very nice aunties who have sent you very nice Christmas cards. And if you're anything like me, you also knew that you were not going to be able to respond in a timely fashion. Yeah, checking the calendar, it's definitely not going to reach them by Christmas if I try to reciprocate with a Christmas card. So then I had the brilliant idea that I could use the winter solstice to sit down and write out some New Year's cards for these lovely aunties who have all sent me very lovely Christmas cards. Guess where you can get some very affordable New Year's cards? The Dollar Tree! They actually had a small selection of New Year's cards, and so I got several for my aunts, uh, varying earnestness. And there was one funny one. While I was there, I also checked out their always picked over, but you know they've always got them candle section. And I picked out this seven day candle to help create a little solstice tableau. I also added a couple of little bundles, conifer bundles that I was able to get out of my yard. After building my fire, I made some hot chocolate. Nothing fancy, just the good old kind that you put in your boiling water and your, it's, it's the Kroger brand. I mean, everything is the Kroger brand, but that doesn't mean that it can't be luxurious. 
ritual is all about your intention. It's not about what material objects you happen to have. So I took my hot chocolate and got ready to kind of settle in for the evening. I did do my cards for my aunties, got them ready to mail. I wonder what stamps I should use. I didn't get any holiday stamps. So I hope they all like Star Wars droids. I also did some journaling. This notebook is from Think Inc. That's the brand name, but they sell them at Target. So I'm sure you can get them online or everywhere. I like this little notebook because it's got this really nice kind of evergreen format. You can circle the date at the top of the page. And so it doesn't matter how long you keep it and how many days you write or how much you skip in between. And then also I kind of like just the, the simple line layout. I like to use this notebook for goal setting. I usually do it for daily pages, morning pages, or evening pages where I am actively thinking about what goals I'd like to accomplish for that day or for the next day. But in honor of the winter solstice, I decided to do a list of things that I wanted to let go of in the coming year. And then I mean, you know, I'm, this is sounding very intense. It doesn't have to be super serious all the time. Then my next thing for the winter solstice was I was going to find something good to turn on the screen and do some reading. And yes, I did play Animal Crossing. I still have to craft all my winter holiday crafts and decorations. I'm still working on that. All in all, it was a really nice way to mark the occasion and to have one last little quiet evening before the hubbub of the Christmas holiday. What did you do before the winter solstice? Is it something that you celebrate? Is it something you're going to start celebrating? Let me know in the comments below. So thank you for joining me for my winter solstice vlog. And I hope that you'll be around for the next one. So don't be a stranger. Love you. Bye. With a hint of root beer flavor.